There is a high chance for additional tropical development behind Hurricane Aaron. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're going to talk about the latest on Aaron, and then we're going to look a little bit long range behind two additional waves that I am tracking. First and foremost, here is the latest on Aaron, certainly making that well-advertised turn since about eight days ago out of the north now are moving to the north at about 14 miles an hour safely missing a direct landfall in bermuda and into the carolinas again we'll go over the latest uh, if you've seen the model projections of the other two waves i would love to know your thoughts post those in the comments and we're going to get to it again the latest on aaron again 110 mile per hour storm the track basically set in stone as it lifts to the north and eventually pushes and pulls off to the north northeast official forecast from the national hurricane center really remaining unchanged for the last several days again there's been wobbles to the west it's been staying on the western and southern end of the cone but a job well done by the national hurricane center uh pinpointing this storm again expected to strengthen further as it gets off uh, the coast of the outer banks look at that now a major hurricane expected again as it splits the gap in between the outer banks and bermuda 115 miles per hour storm and then weakening quickly as it gets up to the same latitude as about Halifax, Nova Scotia, still a tropical storm as we start the weekend. And then look at this, what's left of it could be heading up towards parts of Ireland potentially. So a wild lifespan for Hurricane Air. And again, of course, reaching Cat 5 intensity early on in its life after it became a named storm. Here is the high resolution future clouds and rain. And this is going to be uh, starting on 7 o'clock. Thursday morning, tomorrow morning, if you're watching this on August 20th, on the Wednesday evening here that this was posted, you see it spiraling there, a very large system. We talked about that last week, that it would be very, very large as it split the gap in between the Outer Banks and Bermuda. And then there it goes, 9 o'clock on Thursday night, tomorrow night. And I wanted to show this for our friends across the Northeast 95 corridor, parts of Cape Cod, Nantucket, and also our friends in the Canadian Maritimes. There was uh, some wild model runs that showed this going into Long Island. Again, there's that cool weather you guys are feeling in the Northeast. That is literally protecting you. It's going to continue to slide this off the coast. The weather is all connected. And again, that upper trough there is helping to guide this up and out. And then other than beach erosion, dangerous rip currents, and um, to potentially some coastal flooding, especially in the prone areas, this is going to be a non-issue. If you're still with me, post in the comments where we're tuning in from. We're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into the tropics and look a little long range before we get into the national outlook that does have a low-end severe weather threat across the upper Midwest tomorrow. So here we are, code red on the outline here from the National Hurricane Center officially updating this or upgrading this to a high chance. The... Uh, the preceding wave here, the trailing wave, Aaron, preceding wave of Invest 99L, we still don't have an invest yet on the high percentage, uh, the high probability of development. But you see in that red area, so watching again for Bermuda, that's where we're going to have the chance for this thing to develop as it slides to the northeast of the Caribbean and then turns out there's an even bigger cold front coming and really everybody in the two third eastern two thirds of the country going to get a big 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 taste of fall early next week that is going to shield anything that comes in from the east from making contact making landfall with the uh, United States on the East Coast, really for the next seven to 10 days. So we can thank that. Uh, I also think at the same time, the Atlantic going to shut down as a whole. Then we have Invest 99 back here. There's a little orange bubble underneath this blob of convection here, this blob of thunderstorms. It's looked healthy. It still has a medium shot to develop. This one doesn't have a long time to stay alive. We had the help of... Uh, what we call a Kelvin wave and the Madden-Julian oscillation with a couple of these guys, that kind of goes away. So we've lost the steroid injection, if you will. And now the main development region in between the Caribbean and the African coastline, it's going to get back into its kind of not habitable zone, if you will, for tropical systems. And again, that's a good thing. So I think post Aaron. Even though we do have a high probability for tropical development from one wave officially, maybe a second short-lived tropical system, I think we're going to get a nice little break as we go into the climatological peak 
of hurricane season. And then we might see that flurry of activity that we got for the second half of last season. Focusing on the lower 48 now, post in the comments where you're tuning in from. If you're still with me, consider subscribing. We hang out. We talk about the weather all the time. And I love having you guys here to have this weather conversation. Of course, post in the comments if you have any questions too. I do my best to get to almost everybody and as many people as I can. So I appreciate the conversation that we always have. There's the yellow shaded area. The highest opportunity for some stronger thunderstorms tomorrow is the jet stream kind of hanging up to the northern tier of the country right now. And pretty much from Sioux City to Sioux Falls, back to Bismarck, the Twin Cities, Duluth International Falls. That's going to be our best shot for a few storms to get a little rowdy on Thursday. Back to the southeast corner of the United States, the Florida Sea Breeze is going to come back at us, but it's going to be coming from west to east tomorrow. Weak little upper low going to find itself meandering in the deep south tomorrow. That's going to keep scattered showers and thunderstorms around from Houston back to Atlanta into southwest Virginia and the Roanoke area. And then again, that's going to help to push the flow from the Gulf side through the Florida Peninsula to ignite those thunderstorms on the southeast corner of the United States. Back to the four corners, same kind of system still hanging out here. And this upper level moisture is still hanging around this high pressure system. So it's going to continue to spark scattered showers and thunderstorms from about Denver, uh, through the mountains, into Albuquerque, and then back to around the Phoenix area, just to the east of Las Vegas, southern Utah. So again, always be mindful right around Zion and the Narrows. If things get a little heavy, we can get that flash flooding quick. Again, just be mindful of that always. You know it. If you've been out there, you live out there. It does not take much to get some flooding going on with all the runoff and the Soil basically being clay in spots. Clouds and rain forecast. You can see the French curler out there. That is the Hurricane Aaron, of course, riding up the eastern seaboard, off out of the seaboard, out to sea, parallel to the eastern seaboard. There's 9 o'clock on your Thursday morning. This is 8 o'clock central with those scattered thunderstorms and showers uh, from southern Canada back down into Wyoming. A few more scattered downpours hanging around the Houston area. Let me take this out a little bit further to get those thunderstorms rolling. You see some nasty stuff there, some supercellular. It uh, looks like some structure there. The high resolution tries to pop as we get to the early part of the afternoon in that severe weather risk area that I just showed you. And there are these uh, scattered thunderstorms across the deep south and southern plains as triggered by that upper low that continues to hang out there. You see it right there, and you see the motion pushing back. I want to take you back to the four corners, and there are those scattered downpours, maybe a few rumbles of thunder as we get deeper into your Thursday evening from southern Wyoming, maybe even around Rapid City, back toward Colorado in the front range, the mountains, and then back closer to Phoenix. See that pinwheel, that it's a kind of a nice meteorology 101 lesson there. We sh so we showed you the high pressure center, the pretty much right over the four corners. You can see the pinwheel, that counter or that clockwise airflow, the clockwise motion of the greens and yellows on your screen. That's them pivoting around that upper level high pressure that continues to dominate and helps to generate some of the heat out that way as well. Where we're 112 in Phoenix. Thursday, August 21st. Again, there's some of that cooler air, kind of the appetizer to, I guess, the second course of fall. We're going to get hot again after this big, big cool down coming early next week. But man, this is kind of uh, the appetizer. You're going to get the first course, I think, early next week across a lot of the two th uh, eastern two-thirds of the country. And then we'll get hot again. It's not going to be fall just yet. But if you like fall, pumpkin spice watch we'll have more on that as we get a little bit closer to the event but nice little break from summer it's gonna take a little vacation in the northeast upper midwest and even into parts of the deep south early to the middle stages of next week all righty guys thank you a ton for tuning in post in the comments again where you're tuning in from i'll catch you next time